government saw this being a major, major problem, so they had to step in and started uh, regulating the insulation industry. And what they did was they came up with this um, a division called the ASTM standards. ASTM uh, came up with the state of our value. And uh, how they came up with state of our value is under one form of heat transfer called conduction. So what this, what this tool shows is, uh, is with this light on, um, is conduction and defini definition of conduction is heat transfer from one side of the surface to the other side. So at three and a half inches of cellulose, you got an R13. At three and a half inches of fiberglass, you got an R13. Um, I'll give you another set of numbers real quick. It's uh, on the cellulose side is 67.9 and fiberglass is 75.5. So that's the definition of, um, that's how they came up with state of R value is under conduction only, right? So he transferred from one side of the surface to the other side. What this tool shows is the other two forms of heat transfer. The government never did bother testing. Do you guys know what the temperature is in outer space? It's super, super cold, negative 100 degrees. But the sun's 1 trillion degrees Fahrenheit. How come the sun doesn't heat up outer space? When I was a kid, growing up by a cold window, on a winter day, I always thought that cold draft would get go past that pane glass win window and hit my body, hit me cold. But reality is, it wasn't a cold draft in my body, it was my body pulling towards a cold window. Mm. Heat only moves in one direction, from warm to cold. It's a fact. Heat only moves in one direction, from warm to cold. Yeah. If you think about it this way, if heat only rose, we'd all be dead. Suns are out of space, we're down here, right? So radiant heat's very important in life, and this, and this, this tool shows radiant heat. So as the sun's, so this, this, this light uh, actually represents the sun, right? So we got, we got radiant heat coming through the building here, conducting through, radiating through your attic spaces, correct? You follow me so far? Mm -hmm. Radiating through uh, both these products through here and going towards the drywall in your house. So it's going from, this represents the summer months, right? So most buildings in the, in the summer months all have AC tempered houses, right? So the sun's trying to go from warm to cold. I'll give you another example of radiant heat. If you took a piece of paper and put this covered over the insulations, can you see a difference on the insulations? See how the light transfers through fiberglass a lot more than cellulose does? So the light transfers fire through fiberglass a lot more than uh, cellulose ever does. A lot of insulation contractors know that. They'll go up in the attic with fiberglass and Flash like will drop the fiberglass and the flash in the fiberglass attic, it just lights up the fiberglass. But if you ever go in the attic of a cellulose house, an existing house or a new construction, and you're walking around with a flashlight and you, you drop the your flashlight, what you happens? Lose, you lose it. You're in the dark, right? So that's what happens. So it happens to me all the time when I'm insulating in an attic, the light falls over into the cellulose and I'm completely in the dark. So any questions on radio heat? That's is that why I know um, I was told before that's why um, when you, you know, insulating, you're not trying to keep the cold from coming in, you're trying to keep the heat from going out, right? You want to do both. You want to keep the whole, you want to keep the, uh, you want yeah, to, in essence, she's, it's, she's reflecting back what you just said. That's, that's yeah. correct. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, 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 exactly. So, if you're, if, if, it's, I have a very old, uninsulated attic with open joists. The floor is done, but the joists are open. So would you put drywall up and then? You're talking the your roof, joint, your your rafters up. Yeah. So the floor is done, but your. The floor is not insulated, but there is a floor. Okay, and your question again is. My question is, if you were going to do cellulose, would you put drywall up? Just to, otherwise, you obviously you can't get. To no, the drywall is only inside the home. And right. Are you talking about a bonus room? Talk about an open open joist, sixteen inches, right? Yeah. You can't just. There has to be something that would hold this in. Are you using that floor? Do you want to use that as storage space or as storage usable space? space? Yeah. Okay. In that case, yeah, we could. What we generally do is build a some form of a deck that, and we would insulate under the deck. But um, just to understand your exact question, um, so in an attic space, you have your roof rafters that come down, right. and then you have your floor joists across the floor. Typically, under the floor joists, the drywall is fastened, and then the insulation is installed on top of that. Is that the situation that you're dealing with? Or oh, no, it? I was just, because I was going to put fiberglass up 
into the joists. Up into the rafters? Into the side rafters. Rafters. Right. Were you going to put it in this kind of situation? Right. Okay, right. you don't need to do that unless you want to heat that space. I always defer people from doing that okay. unless they want to use that as heated space. I can't think of too many reasons why you'd want to pay to heat that area. But um, if you want to use the space, it's a yeah. finished attic. It it's going to be a finished attic. Up there. It's already finished except for the insulation. Oh, okay. Well, that, yeah, I understand. So you, it's finished, it, and it doesn't have drywall at this point, or does? No, the, the open joists don't. Oh, you're going to you put can, it up there. You can put a tie yeah. back or something all, uh, above it first, and then right. then smack it with cycles. Yes. Yeah. And then you can blow it just. Blow we'll it show down. you a picture coming up that'll okay. probably address that. We, okay. we stretch a cloth <laughs> netting like the netting underneath a uh, couch. Mm -hmm. It's a white netting. We stretch that across and staple it up, and then we poke a hole in there and we fill up the rafter areas with cellulose okay. insulation. But you want to make sure that if you have a ridge vent at the top and it's vented soffits at the bottom, that you run up a baffle all the way up to the peak, okay. and then you put a stop down there, which I call a stop is either you can put a piece of fiberglass down in there, or you can take the bags that the insulation comes in, cut them in half, and staple those Where around that area, so it doesn't, so the insulation doesn't fill the soffit. Because if you fill the soffit, That's then the you can't get the ventilation that you need. Yeah. yeah. So and if you have any more questions, please call me at any time. I'll give you one more example of radiant heat. If you have a hot iron skillet on a stove, and then take a pot holder and pick it up, but you hold it arm's length away, what do you feel? That rate of heat will up your, from the pan to your face, more of the cold, more of the cold. I'm gonna give you one more set of numbers, okay? The cellulose side is 70.2, 70.2. The fiberglass side is 92.2 degrees. I don't know how long it's been, maybe five minutes now, maybe? Maybe six, five or six minutes. So I'm gonna have you transfer these numbers over, if you don't mind, 70.2 here, and 70.2, yeah. So you're saying that the heat and will be faster than the Absolutely. Okay. Not only that, but there's air moving through there as well. Air. So we talked about radiant heat. Now I'm gonna go over the radiant heat real quick one more time. So the sun comes down, heats up the uh, structure in the summertime months, and it's trying to go through the attic, to, attic spaces here. And you're looking at usually around 130 degrees in the attic in the summer months, really hot or higher. Um, don't you want to get insulation above that drywall line in the summer months, right? So now I talked about, uh, so I talked about conduction, and now I, I just got done talking about radiant heat. So now I'm going to talk about the third form of heat transfer. So there's conduction, radiant heat, and convection, warm air rising. So convection, I'm going to just read this. So convection causes warm air to rise. Heat is conducted into this drywall to the ceiling. Heat is conducted through the drywall to the attic air, and convection causes wherever it arrives and the heat is lost. So, I'm gonna have you write down one more set of numbers here. Remember, hold on a second. Before I do anything, I'm gonna go over this graph real quick. It just shows, and this is what I usually tell people. All these graphs, and there's so many graphs in the, on the uh, websites and stuff, just shows that cellulose outperforms fiberglass in every category. If you do wall spray cellulose, we're gonna talk about that a little bit later, or dense packing, this brochure, and I got plenty of them to hand out to you guys, just shows that it's monolithic, it's, it gets everywhere versus fiberglass. Um, this chart right here, is one thing I do like to talk about real quick. And there's a reason why I'm hesitating. I'm going to wait about four minutes to go back to this test, and I'm going to show you why. This, the government recommends to go up to R60 in the whole country, except for Key West area. Why is that? Because they believe that energy cost today wasn't the same 25 years ago, and energy cost today is not going to be the same 25 years from now. So they just recommend up to go up to R60 and be done with it. Now, this is the government since 2008. I was a contractor until 2012, and I didn't even know about this. <laughs> so most contractors don't even know about this. But we recommend, uh, except for Key West area, the government recommends up to R60 for the whole country. R60? R60, yeah. And you're trying to so if you can do it yourself, you might as well do it, you know. You're talking about this representing R3.8? Oh, no, this, we're talking about the attics now. We're talking about the attics. And we're talking about the government recommendation, not necessarily. And, and, and 3.8, you're right. But three, it is 3.8 R factor per inch. Well, so how do you get how do you get to R60? You put in inch after inch after inch after inch until you get to R60. 3.8. Coverage chart. 3.8. All your bags have coverage chart tunnels. 
So you look at the coverage chart on the bags. You look at the coverage chart on the bags. This is a, a copy of a coverage chart. So we go up to R60, you got to put 17.81 inches in there. 17.81 inches. What's that? I was going to calculate it. Yeah, I always use my calculator. Do you need this back? No, no. So in this area, is R60 really necessary? No. Like, and, and there was my point in the beginning. I am the firm advocate that our value is a farce. I think that they're still using it because the fiberglass industry is lobbying and paying people off and making it so that fiberglass still has a chance and a leg to stand on. But when you compare apples to apples across the entire board, fiberglass gets annihilated. So when you, yeah, I'm sorry. Go ahead. And the air infiltration is the most important issue that nobody even addresses. Wow. Uh, the, the ability for a uh, for, to stop air from passing through it, fiberglass um, is, uh, is it, it, it can't compare. It's four air changes per hour versus cellulose is three air changes per hour. And by the way, we did look up the phone. And uh, closed cell phone, properly installed, a perfectly installed, properly, I'm sorry, a perfectly installed cellular uh, phone, closed cell phone house gets two air changes per hour. Okay. If you don't mind, can I get a map? Did everybody get that? No, I didn't get a map. Who asked that question about the right now? Was that, uh, we're looking at maybe the back? 32 point Two interchanges per hour for a cell phone. 72.3? Yep. 80.6. 80.6. But Donald, thank you very much. Okay, now let's go over what just happened here. Because we, did, we wrote down some numbers and then all kind of moved pretty fast and he was talking about some important stuff. So let's just look at the data that just happened here. So we started out on the cellular side, 67.8 degrees, and the fiberglass side, 68.5 degrees, relatively the same, right? Mm -hmm. After about five, maybe six minutes, maybe? The cellulose side went up by 2 degrees, up to 70.2, right? The fiberglass side went up to 92.2 degrees. Mm -hmm. 20, so how much 28 did they degrees, 28 degrees higher or whatever. And, okay, so 28 so degrees about higher. 26 degree difference between the two. Okay, so does that make sense? Radiation, and, and six, and six, five, six minutes, and air infiltration. All showing that fiberglass is not, I can't sleep at night if I'm installing that in someone's house. Because I know that it's not a good product. Why, why do people, why do people uh, use fiberglass? Because it's, it's lower dust. It's not cheaper though. It's not it's cheaper. Actually, cheaper. Cleaning, especially the attic insulation. A lot of houses are installing the uh, fiberglass in the walls. Um, and then when they go to do the attics, they're like, whoa, man, that stuff's expensive. The fiberglass for the attics is expensive. And then the biggest issue is, if you're going to install an R60 in your attic, there's still gaps between each piece where the piece of wood that yeah. separates each bay. And that's not an R60. So a lot of people are moving over to putting fiberglass in the walls and then blown insulation in the attic. But you're still not getting there because once you have that, that lid there and you got the cellulose, now the insulation is pouring out the walls. So if you're going to spend the money on that, you're really looking at about 10-15% maximum difference to upgrade the cellulose insulation and save 40% of your heating and cooling costs. Mm -hmm. So once it's done, after you pay for itself, after the insulation pays for itself, the rest of that's just going back into your bank account. You can spend it somewhere else. And some on cabinets, on countertops, you know. So that's the way I look at it. And it's not going to cost you more. It's going to make you money and in, in insulate the house with cellulose, for sure. So we talked about um, the, the summer months. Let's see what happens in the winter months. So I flipped it over. We waited about, what, four minutes maybe? And so we started out at 70.2 degrees on, on, on up here in the cellulose and 92.2 degrees on the fiberglass. The fiberglass dropped 12 degrees down to 80.6 degrees in, what, four minutes? So if you lose power, just consider that if you have fiberglass in the house, it lost 12 degrees in four minutes. So cellulose side, guess what the cellulose side does? It actually went up. Yeah. With the temperature off for four minutes, this temp the actual gauge goes up. And yeah. also, fiberglass insulation, when the temperature drops below zero, loses 50% of its R value. So there's two reasons why this happens. Okay, number one, the, the cellulose fibers that interlock each other makes for a tighter fit. Number two, cellulose is a denser product. Density is a good thing, not a bad thing. So when you do look at the coverage charts again, 
when you look at the, let's say they're going to R, R60, at 17.81 inches, it settles down to 16.83 inches. We know it's going to settle. 17.81 inches times 3.8 is a lot higher than R60, it's like R70 or something. You got to blow in more, and we know it's going to settle because it's settled down to the length of the structure R60. Does that yeah, make sense? I, I live in a cellulose insulated home, obviously. Even if I had a fiberglass insulated home, I would still inject cellulose into the walls and blow cellulose in the ceiling. Last winter, I didn't even tell my partner this. But last winter, we lost power for over, two, like it was almost 24 hours. And it was all throughout the night and everything, we had no power. My temperature did not go below 50 degrees inside the house when it was freezing outside. So it does an incredible job of holding the temperature. So when you got water pipes in your house. And you make the kids run around in circles too. Yeah. <laughs> I, have, I, have six, I have six children at home and they're all uh, producing energy. <laughs> So they, uh, we use them to keep the house. All you gotta do is feed them and they produce heat. <laughs> yes, sir. Um, I, I completely understand the house as far as the two uh, products, uh, the fiberglass as well as the uh, cellulose. How would, uh, but what I don't see in the house is a third option for the phone. phone. Yeah, absolutely. So how about that? This okay, yeah, so in those categories, in the R value category, you have, um, you have the, the phone is at 6.5 per inch. So you're looking at about you're looking at about twice what the cellulose and the fiberglass do. Okay. The only problem that you have when you're doing that, when you're injecting the foam, um, is that you're not getting a lot of the foam in there. So when you inject a tube in there and then blow blow the foam in there versus dense packing, when I'm packing it and pulling it back and packing it and pulling it back, I keep compressing that fiberglass so I'm getting as much insulation in there as possible. With the uh, expanding foam, when you inject it in there, it expands to the space that's allowed. It doesn't push and compress the way the cellulose does. So in an existing home, you're not going to get a 6.5 in, in an R13. Yes, ma'am. And I'm going to go back because I have more points on that as well. might not be the proper time for this question, but... Like if you want need to do electrical work after putting in the insulation, is yeah, that so foam a problem? The foam would be a problem. It's always a challenge. I know guys that can still do it. Um, if I had uh, if I had foam in my walls and I needed to do electrical work, I would still pull it off. Um, what I generally do in there, and a trained electrician would do. My friend over here would probably be able to do it, Greg, right? I'd be tearing out all the foam. You might be tearing out all the foam, or you could take one of those those flexible fiberglass rods attach it to your, um, your, your wire, and then you, you, you drill a hole or cut out a little box at the top of the wall where it's coming through the next floor or where it's coming with the light fixture or whatnot, and then you kind of stick your finger in there, and as you put the rod in there, you push the rod to the drywall, and then you start to push it down, and then it rides down the drywall and kind of makes room as it's going down there. Um, so that's one, that's one way you can do it. It is easier with cellulose, and it's even easier with fiberglass, but we're not installing insulation so that we can run wires later. We're using it so that we can reduce our heating costs and save money and keep the house comfortable. So get all your wiring done beforehand, first of all, because even if you've got fire glass, even if you have no insulation whatsoever, you still have to cut out a hole, fish a wire, pop it through, cut out another hole somewhere else, and then you have to patch those holes, drywall them, paint them, Texture them, all that stuff that you're going to have to deal so with. So you saying do the electrical first? Yeah, absolutely, oh, yeah. absolutely. So here's the here's the way that that's done. You run all heating and cooling first, okay? All your duct work's got to get ran because those are the biggest pieces. Then you run your plumbing, okay? Because that's the next biggest. And then you run your wiring. Your wiring can fish around just about everything. So once you have your heating and cooling in place, the only time that that may be an issue is if you're going to use an entire area as a like a cold air return, or if you're going to run a giant uh, heat duct along like a, an outside plate uh, or, or, um, sill or, uh, at the top of a basement wall, an exterior top of the basement wall right along the ex exterior wall. If you block that from getting a wire back there and you needed to get one back there later, it might be a little bit of a challenge. So you want to kind of take that into consideration, all the wiring that you're going to do. And you should do that uh, as, as far as somebody who is a project manager anyways. You should think about all the plumbing, all the heating and air conditioning, and all the wiring that's going to be done. And, and I know what Greg does over here is he draws it out on a piece of paper, and he puts a little mark where every one of his boxes are going to be, you know, where all of his heat runs are going to go, where all of his plumbing is going to go before he ever touches anything, because that's what he kind of does for a living. He's, he's an engineer type of guy. So 
you always want to do that. If you don't have someone like that, you always want to call a friend of yours that's an engineer. There's plenty of engineers out there you can reach out to. They'd all love to show you how smart they are um, <laughs> because they are incredibly intelligent people. But uh, you definitely want to help have somebody that has some of that thinking ability to help you map it all out because it really hurts once you get the drywall up and paint it when you realize that, oh, I didn't run an outlet over there and I need it there so bad. You just got to redo all that work. And then when you paint one little spot, you kind of see flashing in the paint, you really need to paint that whole wall again. You know what I'm saying? So you want to think uh, Another, a, a negative towards uh, injection foam that you were talking about with the question you had mm -hmm. with injection foam for uh, sidewalls is all injection foam shrinks. It's a fact that all shrinks. Now, contract... We have a slide on that. Now, <laughs> oh, yeah. Slide 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 slide. Slide. That's right. Yeah, this will make the God, slides go many faster. Many people don't know that. I would have known only made three slides. <laughs> no, it's still oh, slide. Last night. <laughs> so anyway, all right. Is there any more questions as far as R value or infiltration? Yes. Uh, I'd like to know what R value you would get if you had cellulose and you instead of drywall over the studs on uh, interior walls. But I want to. I've got an, an attic room that okay. has old insulation between the studs on the exterior walls of the room. Okay. Which I can get to from the attic space mm -hmm. around it. So I so want to take out the old stuff okay. and I was wondering if I should put like the foam, the thin foam panels that you just held yes. up that are an inch thick or so and then put cellulose between the studs. As a contractor, what I, mean, I would, what I would typically put do... Put this up against the studs. Exactly. So if somebody hired me to install insulation and foam, I'm going to double charge them. If you're just going to ask me to insulate the wall itself, I would hang netting, and then I would either spray or drive, uh, uh, do a, um, a tube fed, or just stick my hose in there and fill it up from that. If it's accessible, I would either drill it or, or spray insulation off of it once it's netted. So if you wanted to put foam there and then insulate it, you would get a, more, a better R value. In this case, you'd get an extra five. So in an R13, uh, cellulose gives you an R13.3, plus five, you get an R18.5, but you pay a lot more money to have that done. Okay. And it wouldn't necessarily be worth it because it's not the R value that you're concerned about. It's what? Air infiltration. Air infiltration. If you stop the air infiltration, it really almost doesn't matter how much R value you have. You need a little bit of R, you need a little bit of R value, but once you stop that air infiltration, you're in a good spot. Your house is going to be comfortable. Your heating costs are going to be reasonable. You need to have at least what the government has shown, the EPA has shown. You need to have at least three and a half inches of insulation to stop the sweating from happening. So if you take a glass of cold water on a hot day, it's all sweaty, right? That's going to happen to a house as well. And we'll get into some of the issues as far as ventilation and baffles. Baffles, when you install it into the soffits, the baffles are there for two reasons. One, to help your attic discharge the extra heat, which that extra heat's trying to convect through the walls, but it also dries the sweating. As that air movement moves through there, the sweating that the house incurs gets dried out, and it prevents mold from happening, which the cellulose will stop mold from happening, but as the baffles are put up, there's no insulation inside that baffled area, so the air moving up along there would allow that sweating to dry out. Mm -hmm. Does anybody have soundproofing concerns before, currently, or after? Does anybody get really scared by loud noises? Yeah. <laughs> All right. We're about to make some loud noise. So if you're afraid of loud noise, you might want to hold your ears. Plug your ears, plug your ears first. This, this is, is a two by four wall. This is a loud so screaming machine. It's a two by four wall. Okay. A three and a half inches. I'm going to put my ears aside and I'm top. You I'm can take them off and see afterwards. I'm going to put this meter on and I'm going to put this in the box. Ready? Ninety percent sound editing. Now it sounds like not more than ninety percent. Listen. Plus, you had drywall. It's even better. I'm both sides. It's phenomenal for sounds like that. And all we're dealing with is three inch width. Is that three inches or two and a half? Three and a half. Is there a tape measure around? I think that's three. That's more like three, probably. <laughs> so you mean from room to room? You mean you can't even go in and out of room? It's unaudible from one room to the next. Yeah, so if you it's got pretty it. pretty good for self-reference. Yeah, it's very good. Three inches, my three friend. Inches. Less than three inches, like two and seven inches. Is that so, the netting or the plumbing? Is that the netting around there? Yeah. That was huge. This is, yeah, actually. It's just a fringe benefit. Right. That's why it's 
actually like a like wire there. mesh. Oh, so it's not metal, it's like a wire mesh. This one is demo. You don't need that for the house. We use a cloth. What's that? If you have the attic, well, the ceiling is vaulted up like this. Mm -hmm. And the guy came out and did a test. I just had an assessment done on everything. And yes. I need my attic to be insulated. Energy so audit, yeah. Bad. But anyway, so you have that vaulted ceiling. And I didn't look up there, but I'm not going to use the attic. Okay. Do they just, like, fill it all the way, you know? They can. The phone company yeah. will actually try to do that to no, you. No, not phone. But, so. Right. So I'm just saying that for everybody's purpose. A foam company will actually want to insulate the slope roof yeah. because they can't spray foam on the floor as effective as they can okay. in an attic. And you know, they also get more square footage if they do that. And they charge by the board foot per inch by 12 by 12. So a 12 by 12, one inch thick is how they actually charge their price on that. Okay. So that's why foam gets astronomically charged. Price. Now you're not talking about foam, so that's out of the question. So in that, in that situation, the only time that I would ever insulate the actual sloped ceiling in an attic is if I'm going to use that attic in a, in a, in a warm, I need that to be, to be a warm environment or a cool environment. If I want to control the environment of the attic. Otherwise, if I'm going to store stuff up in the attic, I take two by eights, I put a piece of plywood across that and I insulate insulation under it and then all the other areas I just do blown insulation real well all the way around the perimeter and you're locked down and then your house stays comfortable. If you're not going to use it, right. what do you do? Just fill Same it? thing. Same thing. You just blow it on the floor. Okay. Blow it on the floor of the attic. You go up into the attic okay. and then blow it on the floor. And then what the, about the sides? You don't need to do the sides unless you're going to do the ceiling as well. How far up to the sides? It depends on what the R value is. Whatever R value you're installing is around the whole perimeter. Even if it starts to take up some of the spots that is the, the angled part on the edges? Yes. Because we, we, don't, we, we still want that airflow along the edges. You're going to put a baffle in first. You're going to supposed to us. Uh, what is no, a baffle? Good question. What does a baffle look like? What's a baffle? Yes, I'll pull. I'll pull one up. Let me. Uh, want to go look on the uh, on the laptop real quick while we're talking? You can pull it up. Just pull it up. Put a little Google yeah. search real quick. No, we got one in our presentation. All right, let's go to our presentation. There you go. Baffles. Those are what baffles look like. You see them? What the baffles? Baffles, what do you baffles mean? are foam shoots that are stapled to the draw, the plywood of the roof. Point, point to a baffle. Yes, ma'am, right here. This is it right here. Yeah, it's, got it a little, it's got a little space where air can flow down through there, and it's kind of built in such a rigid way that it doesn't collapse. And then you blow the insulation all the way up into that area. And you can go as high as you want, and you can keep extending that up. You can put two feet of insulation up there if you want. You just make your baffle go up high. I don't understand. Okay, so a baffle is a piece of foam that basically forms like a an area like this. Like an egg and it's yes, and it's stapled up to the roof line. Okay. To allow air to flow up through there, and then you insulate underneath, underneath that area all the way up yeah, to. It. Why do we want airflow? I just went over it. The two reasons that you want airflow is one. One reason you want airflow is to discharge the extra heat that's up in the attic, and the second one is can, is sweating forms here. When the temperature outside is real hot and it's cool inside, or vice versa. So, are there soffit vents? Yes, in this case, there would have to be soffit vents, yes, or this sir. would be a disservice. So, you so have to have. A, like a roof vent? You have to have. You don't need to have a ridge vent, but it's best to have a ridge vent. You could put gable vents in and get the similar. Yeah, similar I'm having roof vents, vents put in in this room. So okay, soft, so that's good then. So, what's a soft vent? What's that? Sound like you said Gable soft, vent? No, you said soft vent. Soft, soft, soft vent. Soft, soft, soft vent. Soft vent's the area it's down along there outside. It's that area. So you've got your walls of your outside. Okay, there's a house. Yeah, so here's the soft vent vents. Soft vent vents are perforated. Uh, either um, if you have a vinyl um, soffits, they're pieces of vinyl with holes in them that allow air to go up through there. Or if some people have aluminum. Some people have wood with little holes drilled in or little plugs that put up in there with little slots in it that allow air to flow up through there. But this is where air gets up into there. So we put a baffle down in here and then stop something with either a piece of fiberglass or a bag stapled in there so the insulation doesn't fill into this area. You want this area open so that the air can flow up through there. And then a ridge vent up here would allow the air to flow up and through here and as he, he described with the convection, the heat rises. So as it comes in through here, the air would go up through the ridge vent and discharge. But if you don't have this here, this is a gable vent. This will service you in the same way. Mm -hmm. Now, if you have baffles in here, but there's no vents here, you're actually creating a problem. 
So you only want to install baffles here if this is perforated with holes underneath. If it doesn't, the key is vent it right or blow it tight. So if this didn't have vent in here, you could just fill this whole thing up, blow it tight, and call it a day. You're all good. So it, you would eventually want to put a ridge vent in here to allow that to discharge. But you won't have the sweating here if you blew this all full. But you don't want to blow that full if you do have vent, vented sockets there. And the bridge vents, those a little bit No, that's, just, that's something different. You're talking about like this kind of stuff here or this kind of stuff here. A ridge vent is actually a piece of a cap that runs along the ridge that's got like a, uh, like kind of like a, uh, like a web type of material that allows air to flow out of it. I can't, uh, I don't know if we can pull up a picture of a ridge vent. But yeah, so here's, a, here's your soft, your typical soft area. You would usually have a soft vent somewhere in your, in your sockets. And that's your door And, so with that and then this, here's your little air path. Either you use the static flow baths that we showed you or Cardboard baffles for new construction is often a, a, a good solution too. And then you put the cardboard in and then you maximize your iron value right over the top plates. The secret is you want to get, if you use the styrofoam baffles, if you put them in down here, you want to make sure you put the fiberglass in here if you do it yourself. Roll that fiberglass out nice and tight and stick it into the back side of that 2x4. You want the front side of that 2x4 to be well insulated. So you want the better insulation on the front half of the 2x4. He's four. showing here the thickness of the 2x4 wall. Two by four you wall. want to block it also. You want to block it with fiberglass towards the back of the wall. Yeah. So this could be as much cellulose as possible right here. If you put fiberglass right here, okay, if you put fiberglass right here, you're not getting an adequate amount of cellulose over the plate. What you really want is 10 inches. You want to try to achieve 10 inches there. 10 inches is what it takes of blown cellulose to stop icicles from forming. If you that's don't have, have, what's that? No, I'm saying that's where I'm going to have ice in it, so. Okay, yeah, so if you want, I can come out to your house, take a look at it, and tell you exactly what you need to do. I'll go up in your attic and help you out with that. As far as a ridge vent is concerned, when you, when you have a ridge vent put in on your roof, a ridge vent is a cap, and it looks like this. I don't know if anybody's ever yeah, seen it. You can actually cut the very tip of your house out, You'll so cut that this air can flow from yeah. your soffit vent up through your attic and expel out. Mm. And when they cap over it prevents any water from coming in. So when they actually, install the new roof, most people will cut this out so that there's you can see right down into your attic, and then they'll, they'll lay your shingles over like that, and then when they get up to the top, they lay the shingle and then they put a ridge cap over the top of that. And this is made of a porous material that allows air to flow out. Do you guys understand that? Do I need to spend more time on that? Okay, good. So ridge cap and a ridge vent, they one and the same? No, the ridge vent is, uh, yes, yes, a ridge cap, oh no, no, a ridge, a ridge vent allows it to vent, a ridge cap is just a piece of vent material that prevents weather from getting in. You don't want a ridge cap, you want a ridge vent. Ridge cap would be at the edges, so when you do a ridge, when you have a ridge installed, your roof line comes down like this, they're going to install a ridge vent all but like the last two feet, and then they'll put ridge cap over the last two feet of it. Okay, if you don't have ridge, ridge caps. If you don't maybe have, you just have regular vents in your in your roofs. Okay. Here, yeah. I've seen where there are just chunks of metal, square pieces like this, of metal, and, right here. Yeah, yeah. It's a hole through your roof. This is not this is not one right here, but they can put things like this along the attic roof line that allow air to flow out of there. Those are also uh, roof vents as well. So you said you would want to have a vent, but not the cap. Correct. You want to install, well, you can have some cap up there towards the ends, but you want the ridge vent installed along the, the most, uh, the biggest part of the Point in case, you want your attic to breathe. You want your attic to breathe. That's so it can discharge heat because it gets real hot. You don't have to have a ridge vent. You can have roof vents. Right. Yep. Then you have older houses that got rid of roof vents. Right. But you have, but, but the case in point, you, get, you have to have upper ventilation. Yeah. yeah. And you have to have enough of it, too. So if you don't have the ridge, the ridge vent, you don't need the... Roof vent to ridge vent. That's, that's what you need. Yes, you either want the ridge vent, which is like this, or a roof vent is going to be like a vent that allows air to flow out installed somewhere on the roof. They'll cut a hole. Sometimes if you have like a flat roof or an inaccessible area in your house, it's already got drywall in the house, and it's got like a real small area that there's no way to get into that, a lot of times what contractors like us will do is we'll cut a hole in the attic 
will go down into that hole, insulate the hole, and then install a roof vent in that place. So that's an extra place that air can discharge from the attic. So that's a good way to get into an area. Um, you can cut a hole, get you accessible into that area without destroying the roof or having to replace the whole area. And then you put a ridge vent in and you replace the shingles around that area and you're good to go. No, but my question was, if you don't have that, the vent select area, and you said sometimes they're metal, or sometimes you don't have those vents, you don't need those kind of baffles in your house. Anymore. Correct. So if you don't have perforated soffit, mm -hmm. so write down the word soffit, if you, have, if you don't have perforated, vented soffit, then you don't want to install a baffle. Because all that baffle will do is create a dead airspace where mold can form, rot can happen. It serves no purpose. It serves no purpose. It's actually the purpose it's, of the it baffle does serve is to give it, a, give it a corridor to allow the air to vent. It you would, want, be, it would become a pantry to, to your roof. Okay. If you wanted to destroy yeah. your roof, you could baffle an area that doesn't have ventilation. Okay. Yeah, because you'll trap moisture in there and it'll rot it out. Okay. And plus, you'll spend five bucks on a baffle. That does not. Right. Okay. Right. You can't, can you, because uh, I'm not sure what's on top of my house, but I have the um, baffle <coughs> vent. Is that what that's called on the you, side of the house? Soft vent. Soft, soft, soft vent. vent. No. A ridge vent. Gable vent. Gable vent. Gable I have the gable yeah. vent, but you don't want gable vent and ridge vent at the same time, do you? You don't, you don't okay. need that. No, you don't need that. It's actually it better to have a ridge vent at the top and vent baffles coming up so that the convection just flows up and out. Oh, so I get yeah. that. Both. Okay, and you're good. You don't need to add gable vents. Some people add gable vents if they have a roof that's not really easy to put a ridge vent on. They'll just yeah, pop in some gable yeah. vents. Yes. Yes, ma'am. I want to talk about um, attached garage. Nope, not talking about that. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> attached garage. I want to talk about that. Aren't you, aren't you supposed to ventilate that garage so carbon monoxide will not go to your house? Well, that's a good question. Ooh. Yes, time that I can vent out an attic space, I want to do it because it does, we don't want carbon monoxide and also because you don't want that extra heat building up inside your attic. Right. That's, that's why for new construction homes, they have, uh, they have to have uh, five inches of drywall or two layers of drywall if you have a living space above. Uh, not, in Ohio, it's five days. Huh? What? It's five days in Ohio. Is it? Okay. Yeah. So, so, you, so you're saying that they have to, yeah, to upgrade the drywall, the five eighths drywall, oh. and the garage ceiling if you have a living space above the garage. Which is five eighths the standard here for all ceilings, regardless. Is it? Yeah, you can't you can't put half inch unless you're not. There might be a double layer in certain areas in Michigan. I'm not sure. Yeah, maybe in Michigan, not here. So anyway, yeah. Okay. So as far as carbon monoxide, yeah, we don't want to deal with carbon. We're not, we get, get get it out of the house any way you can. So yeah, so that would be an area, that would be an issue where you'd want to install a roof on it. Or you still need ventilation in your attic. You still want ventilation in your attic. If you have ventilation in your attic, carbon monoxide would move out there just like that. Any other questions on ventilation? Yes. Did you say right before that? Did you say with a ridge vent you put your baffles in? With yes, only if you have ventilated soffit. Go ahead and write that down. If you have ventilated soffit, install a baffle. If there is not perforation, perforated holes in the soffit outside, then do not install the back. Does that make sense? Yeah, but I thought you said with a ridge vent. Okay, so yes. If, if you, okay, it doesn't matter. If you want a ridge vent up here and baffles here, is an optimal ventilated attic. So if you, can, if you can cut a strip down here and install a ridge vent, and you have ventilated um, soffit over here, you'd install a baffle, that way